Hi, my name is Sharon Rice, and this is Philly Changer Chats for Generosity.org. And I'm here with Peter Frank, who's the Executive Director of the Philadelphia Area Cooperative Alliance. Thanks for joining us today, Peter. It's so great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about um, PACA. Mm -hmm. What is it? What's the history of the organization? Just give us some, some background on that. Sure. So PACA is the Philadelphia Area Cooperative Alliance. We are a co-op of co-ops. So we... Um, we're a nonprofit um, that serves the cooperative community. Uh, we have 16 cooperatives as members. Mm -hmm. Those are anything from a food co-op to a credit union to a housing co-op to a school co-op, a worker co-op. So all sectors of the economy um, are under the umbrella of PACA as long as they're a cooperative business. So we support our members and we're also encouraging the growth of new cooperatives by giving them technical assistance and helping connect them to capital. Um, and just spreading the word about cooperatives to everyone who's willing to listen. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. So just explain just for, for those who might not know what a co-op is, what exactly yeah. is a co-op? So any, any type of business can be a cooperative. It's really what sets them apart is the, the ownership structure mm -hmm. and how the, the business is governed. So with a cooperative, you're sharing ownership amongst a group of members. So if you're a, a food co-op, you're sharing ownership amongst the consumers who are shopping at the co-op. But if you're a worker co-op, you're sharing ownership amongst all the employees of the co-op. Um, and they're governed democratically in that the board of directors of that co-op is um, elected by the members um, with a one person, one vote um, sort of uh, dynamic. Um, yeah. So it keeps things on a level playing field. Great. Yeah. So what are, what's a few things, like if you could give like mm -hmm. the three best practice tips of starting a co-op, what could you yeah. tell us um, a people to do? Yeah, so I think um, really studying the model um, and understanding what makes co-ops unique. I think education is a really big part of the cooperative movement um, to look at how other people are using cooperatives to meet their needs. Um, and then throughout time, like how people have um, formed co-ops. Um, there's lots of lessons learned. Is this not, there's, you're starting a business, um, but you're also practicing, you know, taking it a step further by practicing democratic governance, which is not um, not easy. So don't take some of the, the details of meeting planning, um, you have to really take that stuff seriously. Yeah. Um, because if you want to, to be as open and democratic as possible, you have to um, practice meeting facilita facilitation really well. And um, so in addition to that, you have to, to, to run a good business. Mm -hmm. So I think some folks might I think like, well, it's a co-op, um, all the members will pitch in and, and make it happen and make sure it survives, but you really need to, to use a lot of the best practices that are very common in the, the normal business community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the point of a co-op is not to, to make a ton of profit, but you need to make some profit right. in order to just survive. Um, so I think that those are some, some important points. And, and just understanding like how hard it actually is to start a co-op, it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of these food co-ops are taking, you know, three, four, five plus years to, to get started. So when I first encounter a group, I um, ask them what they're doing for the next three years of their lives at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and help them understand that you need to build an organization to, to withstand that um, long development process. Um, with consumer co-ops, it takes longer than maybe a, like a worker co-op where you're needing to get, you know, five, seven, or ten people to join together and, and start the business, but it still is a difficult process. Sure. Yeah. So with um, so with the mayoral can, uh, mm -hmm. elections coming up right now, what are some things you're hoping to see in terms of policy and, yeah. and, and legislation? Yeah. So there are some really good examples of other um, cities that have invested in cooperatives. So uh, recently in New York City, they invested over a million dollars in worker cooperatives. Um, they're using that as that investment as a, a means to to help address some of the the wealth inequality um, and helping people um, bring themselves out of poverty by um, forming worker cooperatives. Um, and in Madison, Wisconsin, they've recently invested in cooperatives in Denver, Colorado, as well. In Austin, Texas, has done a little bit too. So I'm really hoping that um, the city of Philadelphia can look towards these other examples as models for what they can. What we can do here, um, I really do think that in cities that invest in cooperatives, it's, it's a really wise investment. You think about um, how often municipalities bend over backwards to bring corporations to their town to help them move a plant or their offices. Mm. They'll give them huge tax breaks mm. and literally pave the road for them to come and then just, just see them leave once those incentives go away. Um, 
that doesn't happen with co-ops. Co-ops don't leave because they're locally owned right. and locally controlled. Um, and they're not here just to maximize profit. They're here, co-ops are here to, to serve them, the interests of the members in the community. So I think it's a really smart investment for the cities to, uh, to invest in co-ops. That's great, yeah. Um, and, and just as we're wrapping up, um, mm. PACA's future. What do you see in the next maybe year or two for, for, the, for your organization? Yeah. Um, well, we, we really want to channel this growth and, and help this be sustained growth. Um, we're building the infrastructure not for 2016 or 17. We're building it for 2020. Mm -hmm. That for the next um, five years or so, we want to make sure that we have um, solid sources of capital in place so when people want to start a new co-op, they can get financing. Um, when they're looking for technical assistance on how to start a co-op, they have people that they can go to for either free or low-cost advice. Mm -hmm. um, and that there is, there's a place for education and training for people who are leaders in the co-op movement. Um, it's this sort of pillars of the movement we're looking to, 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 to align and, and really build up um, to help see that 2020 and beyond, um, that we're seeing lots of growth and it's sustained growth. Yeah, so we can make a real change in the, the local economy. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Peter. Such great uh, information about PACA, and definitely people can check out the website at yep. PACA.org. Uh, Philadelphia.coop. We have our own domain name, .coop. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> yep, thanks right. for having me. Thank you. Yep.